In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. You are listening to Daily Bread Devotions with Father Eustace Yame, a Salesian of Don Bosco. Your word, Lord, is a lamp for my steps. Stay tuned. It is Wednesday, the 26th of June, 2024, 12th week in ordinary time and participating in the proclamation of the word of God for today are the following daily bread members. Jennifer Lukonde, who celebrates her 75th birthday day after tomorrow from Kitwe, Zambia, takes for us the first reading. Edwin Sebjun Shikoli from Kakamega, Kenya, who celebrated his birthday day before yesterday, takes for us the responsorial psalm. And proclaiming the gospel is Father Matthew Bowman John, who celebrates his priestly anniversary today, working in Kaduna Archdiocese in Nigeria. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance, those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. First reading. The king read all the words of the book of the covenant, which had been found in the house of the Lord, and made a covenant before the Lord. A reading from the second book of Kings, 2 Kings, chapter 22, verse 8 to 13, and chapter 23, verse 1 to 3. In those days, Hilkiah the high priest said to the Shaphan the secretary, I found the book of the law in the house of the Lord, and Hilkiah gave the book to Shaphan. And he read it, and Shaphan, the secretary, came to the king and reported to the king, Your servants have emptied out the money that was found in the house and have delivered it into the hand of the workmen who have the, office, who have the oversight of the house of the Lord. Then Shaphan, the secretary, told the king, Hilkiah, the priest, has given me a book. And Shaphan read it before the king. And when the king heard the words of the book of the law, he tore his clothes. And the king commanded Hilkiah the priest and Hakam, the son of Shaphan, and Akibo, the son of Micaiah, and Shaphan the secretary, and Asaiah the king's servant, saying, Go, inquire of the Lord for me and for the people, and for all Judah, concerning the words of the, this book that has been found. For great is the wrath of the Lord that is kindled against us, because our fathers have not obeyed the words of this book to do according to all that is written concerning it. Then the king sent, and all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem were gathered to him, and the king went up to the house of the Lord, and with all the men of Judah, and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and the priests and the prophets, all the people, both small and great. And he read in their hearing all the words of the book of the covenant, which had been found in the house of the Lord. And the king stood by the pillar, and made a covenant before the Lord to walk after the law and to keep his commandments and his covenants and his statutes with all his heart and all his soul to perform the words of the, this covenant 
that were written in this book and all the people joined in the covenant. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm Psalm 119 Verse 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, and 40. The response is taken from Psalm 119, verse 33a. The response is, Lord, teach me the way of your statutes. Lord, teach me the way of your statutes, and I will keep them. To the end. Lord, teach me the way of your statutes. Grant me insight that I may keep your law and observe it wholeheartedly. Lord, teach me the way of your statutes. Guide me in the path of your commands, for in them is my delight. Lord, teach me the way of your statutes. Bend my heart to your decrees and not to wrongful gain. Lord, teach me the way of your statutes. Turn my eyes from gazing on vanities. In your way, give me life. Lord, teach me the way of your statutes. See, I long for your precepts. Give me life by your justice. Lord, teach me the way of your statutes. Gospel acclamation is taken from the book of John, chapter 15, verse 4a and 5b. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. alleluia. Abide in me, and I in you, says the Lord. He who abides in me bears much fruit. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. You will know them by their fruits. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Matthew chapter 7 verses 15 to 20. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Are grapes gathered from thorns or figs from thistles? So every sound tree bears good fruits, but the bad tree bears evil fruits. A sound tree cannot bear evil fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruits. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus you will know them by their fruits. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We are on chapter 22 of the second book of Kings. And just for you to know, after the death of Ezekiah, who died in 687, Manasseh took over and he reigned for 55 years, up to 642 BC. And thereafter, Ammon became king who ruled only for two years. He was killed by his officials who were killed later on by the people of Judah. And after this came Josiah, who was only eight years old when he became king in 640 BC and he reigned up to 609 BC. We are talking of 31 years as king. This young man grew in his leadership skills that he had the fear of the Lord in his life. 
When the law of the Lord was found in the temple, Josiah led the people in prayer, in worship. Josiah led by example that that law, that scripture should be read. And he was the one in front to do the reading of scripture. I don't know if this is happening with our leaders today, if they are leading by example in matters of faith, if there is any decadence in a society, if the society becomes rotten, we have to know where that is coming from. It is coming from the leaders who are not ascetic enough to lead by example to make the people know the importance of God in their lives. And by leaders, I'm not just referring to the political leaders. No, I am talking about the leaders also in family life because that's the first government we have, the house, the family. If I am a parent and I'm not showing my children the way to God, I am bringing destruction in the society. I must read by example. I must be the first one to take the Bible and read. I shouldn't do anything by remote control. My children see me as a role model. And if my children are seeing me as a role model, they are looking at whatever I am doing and they are thinking that's exactly how life should be. So don't blame anybody. If your children start troubling you later, you have not entrusted their lives in the hand of God. Because if you entrust their lives in the hand of God, all these things will not be there. The drugs you find your children taking, it is all because you never reinforced in their lives the importance of God. Because once you entrust your children into the hands of God, then you don't need to speak much. They are going to live their lives as God intends them to live. And it is you to help them. The gospel passage of today tells us, you will know them by their fruits. He wants Christianity. Jesus wants Christianity to be a fruitful religion. He doesn't want a religion that does not make us significant. He wants us to be known by our actions. He wants us to be known by the love with which we live our lives. He wants us to be known by the principles we show at our workplace, in our businesses, in our family life. Let people know from the language we use that we are baptized. The language that we use must be a baptized language. Some of the insults I see coming out of the mouths of our believers are not baptized insults. Do you want to know what a baptized insult is? A baptized insult is like this. You tell somebody, you angel, you Saint Gabriel. That's a baptized insult. You Saint, you holy man. That's a baptized insult. That is in line with the will of God. Check your own language. Check how you speak to others. Check how you conduct yourself before social media. Are you portraying a dignified man, a dignified woman before the world? Or people cannot even see the difference between a baptized believer and a non-believer at all. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed Wednesday to you. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.